honestly, that's why when I looked at my phone back in December and I saw 80 million for four years, I said, absolutely give me this guy every single time. Hello and welcome to Blue Jays Today, where we always have something to say about the Blue Jays. I'm your host, Adam. And I'm your host, Nick. And today, we're going to be talking about we're gonna be talking about our big off-season mm-hmm. signing. The guy who we all, we saw the, the pop-up on our phones while we were at work, <laughs> while we were out with our girlfriends, while we were out with our other friends, and we were like, <laughs> no, stop everything, I gotta look at this update we're talking about Hinjin Ryu and Mm -hmm. he is our ace or immediately is he and that's what we're gonna be talking about today so let me hear it ah damn what do we think man is Hinjin Ryu so he got the stuff oh do we pay him the right money I can answer you right away he is absolutely our ace there's literally no one else like Chase Anderson by the way just went down with oblique strain Mm -hmm. Um, he's out he's out uh, Tanner Rourke, uh, he's just an innings guy, fourth, fifth, third pitcher, mm. um, and all the other pitchers are our prospects that haven't really played yet, other than Boraki, who needs to prove himself yet again in another yeah. year. The competition is definitely Very not not there not <laughs> right now. Right? Right? Yeah, <laughs> but Hengen Ryu clearly, you know, league leader in ERA last year, second in Cy Young award votes, definitely deserves to be our ace of the rotation. Hengen Ryu. Let's break down some of his stats. So, Nick, what are some things about Hinjin Ryu that you like? That you like kind of that seen, stand out to that me. Stand eh? out to you. Well, I would say that he's a guy who. It's very interesting, man, because uh, like over the last couple seasons, he has proven himself that he he knows the strike zone, and what I mean by that is that there's no free passes with Hinjin Ryu. This guy mm. does not walk people, Mm-mm. and he doesn't make it easy to smack off of him. And what I mean by that is, as far as exit velocity, as far as hard hit rate, as far as anything to do with somebody getting a barrel on the ball, that is very, very, very difficult when this guy is throwing pitches. And I think that has to do with the fact that he utilizes such a wide selection mm-hmm. of pitches that he, he gets the batters really in their heads, yeah. you know? To, to comment on what you just said a little before and, and also about his wide range of pitches, like just to put a perspective for our audience, he's in top four in exit velocity, meaning top four in low exit velocity in the league, as well as top 1% in walk percentage. Like, it's really hard to get a home run off this guy because, like, you just can't hit the ball very yeah. hard. And the know? reason why is because he has a range of pitches with different speeds and variations. His fastball can go up to 90 miles per hour, whereas his curveball can go as low as 72. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, with that 18-mile-per-hour difference, you're going to have a lot yeah. of a lot of batters swinging and missing, guessing on what's coming next. And and I'm gonna pause you because like let's face it, a 90 per hour fastball, it, it's not elite. It's not it's not the selling point on this guy. What is the selling point on this guy is, in my opinion, his changeup, and his changeup, the way that he can utilize that and get just like. He places it so well, man, and gets people to swing. And Agreed. It, it's just it, the placement and, and the way that he orients his pitches. Like, I feel like I feel like he's just a perfect guy for ERA. Well, here's the thing. It's like you're talking about uh, his changeup. The thing is he can locate his changeup. Yeah. He can locate his changeup. He can locate his sinker. He can locate his cutter. He can locate, he can locate any pitch he wants in any time, any place in the strike zone. When I'm in typically, typically with his uh, uh, fastball, he, he typically throws it up in the zone. And that's a trend that's going on in the MLB recently that you, you throw the fastball up in the zone to get pitchers up, or to get batters to pop up. But his changeup and his sinker balls are always low and away, low and inside to right handed, left handed uh, batters. But his cutter, he can throw anywhere at any time. Uh, so this guy is dynamic. He can change velocities, he can do everything he wants. And that is why he's got such a low ERA, Mm -hmm. such a low contact rate. And honestly, that's why when I looked at my phone back in December and I saw 80 million for four years, I said, absolutely give me this guy every single time. Yeah. And I mean, like, let's talk about the contract a bit because 
You know, it, it's not, it's not, it's not Garrett Cole money, but it's also not insignificant either. You know, like we have decided that we're going to pay this guy $20 yeah. million dollars per season. And, and we don't have a lot of guys we're paying right now, but I mm-hmm. do want to state, you know, he is at this point anyways, 33 years old. He's not, he's not a young kid. Um, you know, do you think that this guy's going to hold up for this contract? And that's hard to say. That's hard to predict. And here's, and here's my thing. It's like, like you said, like we're not paying many guys right now. And what, what do the Blue Jays need? We have a strong, strong batting lineup, but we don't have as anyone to support us and anyone to guarantee us any wins. We need we need these kids to have confidence. We can't have them losing sixty games again, right? Or sorry, ninety games again. Yeah. We need someone who can actually when they when they go out to play, they go, okay, we have a chance to win today with Hunch and Ryu, right? Uh, so I think it's a great deal. And by, and by the time that this team is built, hopefully. By the end of Ryu's contract mm. in the fourth year, we're going to have a team who's going to compete. And hopefully by that point, we're going to find a number one, a number two, whether it be from our farm system, from free agency, number one and number two pitcher. And Ryu is going to be our third pitcher. Right? Well, that, that'd be ideal, you know. And, and realistically, the way that I look at it is, yes, he is 33. He's not young. And yes, this is a long deal. So we could get, you know, screwed in the sense that if this if this guy just wants to completely stop producing right like he wants to hit the regression see he hit his big deal and he wants to stop i don't think that's going to happen mm-hmm. by looking at his career stats like his his career era is 2.98 mm-hmm. and obviously like that is very elite that means like in any game that this guy pitches in we have a chance to win. And I know Absolutely. specifically something that we've talked about mm. is that we're saying on the batting side, we want to get somebody who is a veteran, who mm-hmm. is somebody who has been proven in the league and who's been around to yeah. help these young people develop. And I think from a pitching standpoint, if, if you want to talk about you know helping um, a Nate Pearson develop, helping uh, Baraki develop mm-hmm. into their full potential – Having a guy like Hinjin Ryu, who had an ERA of 2.32 last season, that's a yeah. pretty good role model yeah. to be modeling yourself after. Absolutely. There's never been more important than like any sport anywhere to have a veteran presence. And I remember in 2015, like they brought in veteran presences in the bullpen because all of our bullpen guys were young, didn't know, you know, Roberto Asuna, right? He, the young guys, you bring in someone like a Greeley in 2016, right? These people who can guide these young guys that are going to absolutely lead us to develop even further, mm-hmm. right, as a whole team. Yeah. So let me ask you, Nick, with all this talking of Hunjin Ryu. Like what are, what what are, are my are, predicts? What are your what predicts are, for the season? Yeah, okay. Um, of course, and I've made them. But uh, realistically, 2.32 ERA, in my opinion, when you look at his career metrics, unsustainable. Which is fine because that is legitimately unreal, and that's his ceiling, you know. Yeah, that is that <laughs> is his ceiling. ceiling. Like he could do that again. He could do mm-hmm. that again, mm-hmm. and I'm not discounting that. Mm-hmm. I think that, and and what I did basically out here, Adam, was I I spanned it out for a whole season, and then I lowered it down for a sixty game. So I'll, I'll say the sixty games, and mm-hmm. that was I predicted him to have an ERA of. 3.21, which in my opinion is still very, very well, it's not my opinion. It is very good. <laughs> it's very good, and he can win us games. Yeah. A whip of 1.081 Ks, 52 wins, 6 L's, 2. Taking right. 2 L's with Hinjin Ryu, and we're taking 6 wins. That's what I'm saying for this mm-hmm. guy. I think that he's going to help us win games you know or at least you know like give us a chance absolutely and here and and i'll say my predicts too yeah what are yours and here's leading into my predicts he's now playing 40 games against the al east you're facing boston you're facing tampa you're facing the new york yankees you're facing lineups that are monsters facing monsters right so i padded mine a little bit to be like maybe he's going to give up a little bit more so era is 3.42 He's got a whip of 1.15. Now, the strikeouts, 
66, all depends on how many games, how many pitches he uh, throws, you know, if he pitches like 80 innings. Well, it, it's hard you know, to it's hard to predict K's just because, you know, we don't we necessarily don't know. know how many innings. Like this, this shortened season, man, like it's tough to say. Like mm-hmm. I was trying to go off a, a thing where he pitched 71 innings. No yeah. idea how accurate yeah, that's Yeah, I went off be. 87 innings, so it's like so that's what is the terminator. Yeah. Um and then his win loss is going to be 5 and 3. So Pretty safe for the win loss. Win loss also is is a, is a dying stat too. That doesn't mean much. It's no, it, it doesn't. It doesn't mean much. But to know that this guy mm. had fourteen wins last season and five L's. Yeah, with you the know, LA Dodgers. Ex- of course, <laughs> of course, with the LA Dodgers. But you cannot discount what he did for that team. You know, yeah. it, it makes me think that this guy is a winning pitcher and somebody who Absolutely. can help the Toronto Blue Jays. Win some games. Absolutely. So, so let us know what you guys think. Do you think Hinchin Ryu is going to be the ace of the rotation? Do you think he's going to help us lead it by the end of his contract into a World Series championship? Let us know in the comments down below. Yeah, I also want to know what you guys think about the contract, too. Like, is this too much? Is this too little? Like, did we sign him for the right amount of time or the wrong amount of time? Let us know, man. You can also check us out. On Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Anchor, and Radio Public, and obviously on YouTube and our Instagram. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for watching. And go, Jace. Go.